Hey guys, this is Neil here at Spardella Arms. Uh, I'm over here on the automatic surface grinder. I'm gonna do some grinding on these frame parts today. Um, so if, if, if you can tell on the video, right now these, uh, uh, these parts have a, a blanchard ground finish, which is, is done kind of as a first step to the blank in order to um, get the width close to final dimension and uh, you know give us some datums to work off from as we fixture the part and other ops. Um, so we leave a little bit of material to be finished ground off. Um, we do that, it's not quite the last step in the process, but it's it's toward the end of the process of making a frame. And, and so I basically just need to skim grind uh, the part at this point in order to give it a, uh, a nice, smooth, even, uh, scratch-free, flat sides, basically. Um, so I've already got the part um, fixtured on the mag table, uh, mag chuck. This, this part is, is held down with magnetism only. So this big electromagnet is sucking this, this steel part down to the table. Um, and it holds very well it, the the grinding pressure is is very low on an operation like this so we're just we're just gonna be skimming off five ten thousandths of an inch per pass so um, I've already trued my wheel up so I got a nice fresh uh, dress on the wheel and I'm gonna touch off on my part and start grinding So basically what I'm doing here is I've got uh, just a regular sheet of paper, um, scrap paper. Uh, sheet of paper is about 3,000 thick. Um, and so I, I jog the machine down close and I'm just gonna bring it down with my fine adjust while I'm wiggling this piece of paper until I feel some resistance. The, the wheel is not spinning right now or anything. I'm just, the, the spindle's off. I'm just starting my setup here. So I feel a little bit of resistance and there. So now, uh, you know, I might have to drop the camera down a little bit so you can see the wheel. Okay, so now you're at a little better angle so you can, uh, you can see the grinding wheel. Um, this piece of paper, there's, there's still a tiny little gap between the, the wheel and the parts. See, I can spin the wheel. Um, but when I put a piece of paper through, just the, the thickness of that paper um, is enough to catch and turn the wheel. So, so I know I'm about three thousandths away from my part right now. So um, that's plenty good for a starting point. And I'm going to start the spindle up and... Uh, start start the automatic uh, back and forth feed and we're gonna uh, touch off or spark out on the part where we're gonna I'll adjust the head down until I see the grinding wheel start to grind the part and then that, that's a good starting point for us Hey. 
Ja. You can't see what I'm doing here on the controls, but I'm just dropping the the wheel down a few ten thousandths at a time and w watching for sparks here. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but I could just barely hear the wheel touch a high spot. And if I stop the auto feed, uh, you may not be able to see it, but I see a little shiny spot on my part right there where, uh, where the wheel just, just barely uh, touched the part. So at this point, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my coolant on. Okay, so I got my coolant on here. Um, start my power feed again. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, turn on my my traverse feeds that pass across the part. So it's it's basically stepping over. Oh, I don't know, like like a 16th or a hundred dow or something like that. Per pass, it's it's uh, traversing across. You may notice in the video uh, a little bit of shakiness. That's because I got the the camera mounted to the carriage of the machine. So every time it, uh, it it traverses a little bit, it probably shakes the camera just a hair. Yeah, so you can see it is sparking out on the part. It's basically taking a tiny skim cut. Um, and uh, what the coolant is doing is it's flushing the little grinding uh, dust or chips out of the wheel um, and keeping the part cool, keeping the cut cool. Um, so it's it's really critical if you're going for a nice finish like we're going for today that uh, that you grind with coolant. You could certainly grind uh, grind this part dry, but um, you're just not you're not going to get the the finish quality uh, dry grinding. So you can see that the, uh, the machine's basically made two passes. Um, hasn't quite cleaned up the surface yet, and I know I'm gonna have to take several more passes uh, on this side before I flip the part. And because it's so boring and repetitive to, uh, to grind like this, I'm gonna skip ahead to the, the part where I'm uh, uh, taking a measurement and, and refixturing the part. Okay guys, I got the machine stopped here. Um, just going to take a measurement. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm 
finished grinding on this side, but I just want to make sure. Checking it with the depth micrometer. Yep. Yep. So I hit my dimension. Now it's time to uh, uh, get the part out, flip it over for the next side. Uh, here's another interesting thing about uh, a mag chuck. So um, I can turn the magnet off at this point, but residual magnetism will still hold the part down um, and be difficult to remove, uh, difficult to replace after I flip it. Uh, but this mag chuck actually has a feature, uh, a DMAG feature, where it, it kind of switches the magnetism poles back and forth to, uh, to take the residual magnetism out of the part and out of the chuck. And you can actually watch the little grinding chips uh, kind of dance back and forth as it demags here. You might be able to see that on video. Let's see. Yep, so now I'm starting to be able to move the part, and there we go. So now I can. I can turn off the DMAG and uh, and no residual magnetism left. I can I can get this part up off the table and flip it over. So you'll notice that, uh, or you may not realize in the video, but I didn't actually move uh, the head of the machine, the, the Z position of my grinding wheel, um, because the, you know, the part is a certain thickness. So flipping it over really has, you know, negligible effect. Uh, I, can, I can flip the part over and continue grinding the other side. Um, so I don't have to back off and, and retouch off, which is nice. Um, I've cleaned the table. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is I've got a, a stone and I'm just going to give the whole table a little, quick little stone. Should crank this back a little bit so I can reach better. I just moved the table forward a little bit so I can get the whole thing. And so um, machining actually, you know, precision machining, uh, a lot of it really is cleaning and, uh, you know, setting things up. And it's just, especially grinding is a very dirty process. Um, you can see I, I blew the part off. It's still got some uh, uh, grinding dust on it. The stone will take off any any small um, marks or dings that may have got put in the chuck when I put the part on it the first time. Um, now when I flip it over, uh, usually I don't stone the, um, the first side that I, I ground because that can that can put little tiny scratches in it and it's there's, it, it's a freshly ground surface. There's no dings or high spots, as long as you're careful with it. Um, and you can probably see in video how nice and finished and shiny the finished ground side is, whereas uh, the Blanchard grinding, of course this, this uh, I um, uh, sandblasted all the rounds and you see there's a little bit of overspray or you may be able to see on my flats but but you can see that kind of blanchard cross hatched grinding pattern 
it's it's actually pretty neat looking um but it's not really especially for a firearm it's not really a finish uh a, a, a decent finish you know so so that's why we that's why we do finish grind the parts so okay make sure wipe everything down with my hand because even the there's even dust in the air that tends to settle on on uh the chalk and it's i want to make sure wipe everything down clean and i'm positioning my part here in the center of my marks okay and here's a uh pro tip don't forget to turn your magnet on when you uh when you put your part on um i've heard a lot of horror stories in industries uh about that i've i've actually never personally done that but uh you, you can see i mean this part i mean it's a big electromagnet holding this down it is now firmly held in place but if you simply forgot to turn your mag check chuck on it would probably throw the part um you know it, there, there is a safety um guard there so hopefully it wouldn't it, it wouldn't hurt anybody but not something that that i want to try personally um okay turn everything back on here <laughs> I just want to feed it one pass across just to make sure everything looks good. Or at least start a pass. can't turn the chuck off um or else your part will move you don't have to re-clean everything to fixture it so trying to get the, all the surfaces really clean so that you can uh actually take a accurate measurement is a little bit of a pain yep and i hit my dimension i was going for so perfect on to the next one. Uh, if you guys like this sort of content, please subscribe and hit that like button. And uh, if you're interested in ordering your own Spardella Arms Custom 1911, go to our website, spardella-arms.com. Thanks for watching.